Hi, I'm Joanne Bond, and I'm your coach on my show, It's All About You. So welcome. And tonight we have with us Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about um, an aspect of coaching that we haven't talked a whole lot about on this show, and that's a business startup. Mm. And you are a great person to talk about this because you are really in the first six months, is it? Yeah. Not yeah. yeah, not even. Six yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm in, just entered my 14th year. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So it's always good because, you know, reinvention is almost yeah. like startup every time, too. Yes. So, exactly. yeah, so why don't we, so let's talk about, uh, we won't dig too far back, but why don't you give us a little bit of background about, you know, sort of what you were doing and what made you decide to go, kind of go into business on your own. Okay. And then we'll talk about where you are right now, what sort of things that you're grappling with. Okay. Well, stop me if I start to ramble. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. I've been in the healthcare business for about 20 years and mostly working with aging service providers and um, within that arena doing mostly business development type work and working um, for companies. And so, so aging service providers would be yes, people like who service the aging population. So you might have a continuing retirement community, a skilled nursing facility, and I also um, work with uh, providers who service that business. So rehab mm. providers, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and so about, and in different roles, but about 20 years within that sector, and, and I've been thinking for quite a while I needed to do my own thing, and mostly it was driven by just being um, stagnant in oh. what I was doing and bored. Um, and then also starting to see a need where the clients were wanting more of that consultation opposed to this is my product and service, this is the way it needs to be, and I was actually wanting to be in a more expansive type of position. And so I uh, launched my company, um, Collaborative Consulting, in uh, May yeah. of this year. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So what have you taken with you that you're now doing on your own? Um, meaning, like, what are what focal areas? Are you still in aging services? Yes, still in aging services. <clears throat> um, I, what I've taken is kind of I've I've taken what I've been doing, but expanded on that. So, mm -hmm. aging services, um, but mostly looking at the areas of partnership development, um, strategic alliance creation, and um, traditional than more traditional business development, which would be a piece that I've taken from my previous experience, mm -hmm. and then education and training. Oh, so those right. are kind of the four areas that oh, I'm focusing wow. on. So how yeah. is business? You know, it's good. It's, yeah. um, I, 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 I cheated a little. I had a client before I quit my job. Yeah. So I had one ready to go. Yeah. And um, from that, that was my first one, and then I've, you know, picked up about six more. Yeah, that's when we started coaching, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Was when you had mm -hmm. just one, right? And it was was that enough of a well? And people do that. That's it's a kind of a safety net. Yes. But then they tell you. I remember when I first started, um, I went to the Small Business Association score the retired executives. Yeah. And to get, just get some advice, and they said. I remember at the time they said one of the, the golden rules of starting a business is you should have customers. Yeah. And I remember I had no customers. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to start the business. You know? Yeah. No, I had one. I yeah. wasn't quite ready to take that full leap. Um, but yeah, one that was for six months. Yeah. And so it gave me a little bit of that security to go ahead and go for it. Yeah. Do you think you, in retrospect, you would have done it without that? Yes. Yeah. I would have. Yeah, I would. ultimately, you mm -hmm. were just ready. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think you were, ultimately. too. Ultimately, and it was good that I, I think that, um, yeah, it was at that place where it was going to be a choice point, and so I knew I couldn't evolve any farther within the current structure yeah. of what I was doing, and so it either was I was going to leave or, you know, the universe was going to kick me out somehow, <laughs> some way. <laughs> Is this the first time you've been in business for yourself? Mm -mm. I was about 10 years ago. What kind of work it, did you do then? It was consulting, but it was more transitional. I was in grad school mm -hmm. and um, leaving a job, 
and then just didn't want to work full time, wanted to pick up just a few projects to get through school. Oh. So I did that wow. and then ended up going to work full time for one of my clients. So you already have the consulting skill set pretty well ingrained. So, so. Yeah. I'm getting it. Yeah. yeah I think it's, um, you know, with what I was doing before, I, that was my natural style. Mm hmm but that wasn't def um, that wasn't um, my role per se mm -hmm. within the organization. But I seem to lean towards that consulting style. Right. Um, anyway. And now, actually, that's one of the things that you've talked about about what's happening right now in your business mm -hmm. is that gravitation toward the trusted advisor role. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. What's that look like, or what's happening with that? Um. Like shifting more from, I think you use the word subservient mm -hmm. to yeah. more expert? Yeah, yeah. Um, my experience, and even though people might not completely agree with this, but the business development role mm -hmm. traditionally is more of a subservient type of role to the potential client. Mm. And so there's more of that, a lot of relationship building and guiding them to, you know, purchase your product or service or put together deals. Um, but you're definitely taking more of the backseat role mm -hmm. where I'm starting to fill in this new arena. Um, I probably need to speak up a little bit more and be more um, directive. Mm -hmm. Although some, some clients are looking for that validation Many are looking for you to say, mm, "This isn't. This isn't going to work. This will work. These are the things you need to do," and have more um, directness about it. Do you think that's actually a shift in you more than it is in? Could be. Yeah, because I would be. think any client, you know, if you had a good relationship, is always interested in sort of what your opinion may be as the outside consult. Sometimes in business development, there's the feeling that, oh, they're just trying to sell me something. Mm. And so um, it, takes a, it takes longer to build that trust in relationship where if they've hired you as more of that consulting role, they're wanting, hey, I want your expertise. Yeah. Um, there's not as much, I mean, there's still the relationship building aspect, but what I'm learning is it's condensed um, because they're actually seeking out me. Mm. I'm not pursuing them. Mm -hmm. If that makes, and that's a, that's a shift. Yeah. That's a total um, shift internally. And are they pursuing you for your expertise? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And because they can trust you? Yes. Right. Yeah. And I have that naturally. Um, that trust factor there is there naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, it's a different, it's a different dynamic for sure. So what do you think, how does, how will that look for you? Or what do you think that change means for you to kind of, um, to step up and to be more of a of a trusted advisor versus a subservient responder. Mm -hmm. What is that? What do you think that will mean differently? For one, I think um, being very comfortable with giving a recommendation mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily having to always guide. Yet, I think the guiding piece needs to be there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking up a little bit more and and actually it, it almost becomes to an internal feeling of oh I know this yeah and just not not because right now um, with having a new business a lot feels overwhelming at times yeah and everything feels kind of <sighs> new and so there's a little um, sometimes a little bit of like oh god what am I doing <laughs> And yeah. so overriding that and still being able to give the guidance, give the direction, speak up, and that doesn't necessarily mean everybody's going to do it, mm -hmm. but then also being able to coordinate resources um, to implement those ideas mm -hmm. and to be part of the implementation um, opposed to more in a business development. Once the deal's done, I'm gone. I'm on mm. to the next thing where right. this is more almost project management all the way through. Right. Um, I don't so know if you I actually, answered your question. You're actually kind of portraying business development like selling. I am a little bit, yeah. 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 Compared yeah. to, so business development for the company you worked for was selling more, more product. Selling. More yeah. selling. M more product service, yeah. Because, but Definitely. business development as a term sounds more like more of a consulting role. Yeah. You would help people figure out, you know, 
you know what they what they want to do with what they have what they're good at what they're not yep. so good at what they want to steer away from yes yeah yeah so then when you approach your clients you kind of go looking at what it is they want to accomplish and then kind of making offerings or recommendations around yes what they could consider to accomplish that yes for example I had a client that basically wanted me to do one thing around marketing and when I went in and had this day-long meeting which you and yes. I talked about yes. um, and you coached me on which was great um, it Thank actually <laughs> was clear when I left that before this one little piece could happen they needed the infrastructure development they needed to have the people and the systems in place to actually execute and so I came back and said, I can't do this piece successfully mm -hmm. if we don't do this piece. Right. And so, um, you know, that's kind of walking away from a sale <laughs> yeah. in a way. Yeah. And yet I felt I had to do that or um, it wasn't, it wasn't going to get implemented. And therefore, my agreement with them would have not been very successful. Right. I, you know, I always... Um, it's interesting to talk about because I, you know, because I'm in business for myself, obviously, and I do that, and how I approach it. And I was thinking of a conversation I had recently with a client who I've had for quite a few years. Not like steady diets. Yeah. So we kind of go in waves. I'll do things yeah. for him. I'll facilitate a retreat. I'll work with his executive team. I'll coach some of his people one on one. Um, and he called me and asked me about. Uh, somebody to coach and and his HR manager was with him and mm -hmm. I remember the what was interesting about the conversation is that they were really kind of fishing around for solutions but they didn't they weren't calling me to hire me yeah necessarily yeah but they could have also been ca calling me to hire me yeah but but in the context of the conversation and just staying open to what it is they were trying to figure out. Yeah. We figured out that the first step was a different first step. Yeah, that's and that's the like you're um, saying, the fluidity. It's a different yeah. Yes. That has been another adjustment is to be able to go in open and uh, being able to be a little more fluid mm -hmm. opposed um, to having kind of an agenda. Yeah. Because ultimately the agenda for let's just say in the selling would be to get the person to buy the product or service. Right. Where this is, um, you know, um, it demands more fluidity. Yeah. <laughs> it demands a little more openness and being able to respond to what is right here, right now. Well, you were really, um, you prepped a lot for that meeting. Yeah. And then you also went in and stayed open and it turns out to have looked differently. Definitely. How was your comfort level You know, once, in staying yeah. open to that? Before, not so comfortable. Once I got there, I was fine. Once I was there in the meeting and I could see, like, oh, I can do this, yeah, uh, I was totally fine. Um, but beforehand, not so fine. Yeah, I didn't, I was a little, yeah, yeah, nervous because well, you're trying to anticipate it. Yeah, so do you think that you trust yourself in your ability to be fluid? And to stay in the moment? Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Except, <laughs> you know, most of the time, I would say, um, yeah. But in, in scenarios like that where there was a um, numerous, um, or there was a diverse group of people, mm -hmm. and I'd never met any of them. Mm. All of my contact had been over the telephone and no, um, you know, face-to-face -face at all. Yeah. And so I, I didn't feel as um, open going into it. But when I got there um, and I met the people and, and it, it was totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. They put you at ease? Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 And vice versa. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think, too, that there was the feeling, oh, she's not coming in to look for what's wrong. It was more I positioned it as let's do a... A creative planning meeting yeah let's talk about kind of like what you said right so you did more facilitation mm -hmm. right you create mm -hmm. frame mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah. yeah which was quite fun yes yeah, yeah. that's I think that's kind of how I like to approach it most comfortably mm -hmm. I think it brings out the best in me yeah to just sort of have this kind of this idea of the outcomes but not real specific results just you know we need to create an environment where we can have this dialogue or we can 
and do whatever we need to do. Yeah. And and I like and I find that over the years I do more upfront planning than I used to with the client. I don't plan alone like mm -hmm. I used to. That's actually very good. Yeah. I do that, a lot of yeah. meetings either with them on the phone yeah. or with them face to face. Yeah. You know, and that by the time you get to the offsite or to the big meeting or the retreat, all the work is done. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea for me going forward. Because um, I typically am just having a couple conversations. Mm -hmm. And so it might be better to add a little bit more of that. Yeah, you know, and the clients, I think they appreciate it, you know, because they're, they're working through it. I mean, people, if I have way too many questions to answer and I'm off the phone and now I have to create something, I'm thinking, no, they're, what I just, what I think that means is that the client is still trying to figure out what they want to. Yes, yes, yeah. So if that's happening for me as well, then I feel like the whole thing should be, maybe we need to talk about this again. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you're incubating, so let's talk again. Yeah. And that's yeah. how people are these days, because I don't think they really know. I mean, they know they need something. But they're not sure. But not sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they're not sure how to integrate it all. Do I want to do a survey first? Uh, do I want to just make the decision with a smaller group of people? Mm -hmm. Do we want a planning committee? Do we want to just, you make it up and come give us and accomplish these things? Yeah. And there's, I think people are a lot more thoughtful. Yeah. Well, I did, you know, name the company Collaborative Consulting because of that collaboration piece. Yeah. And I think that you, in healthcare, especially that's a trend yeah and so you're seeing uh, more partnerships and collaborations being developed opposed to duplication of services mm -hmm. and so that was part of what i was thinking from a consulting role too instead of just because consulting can have a negative connotation right so let's collaborate on this mm -hmm. um, and that may mean me collaborating with other consultants mm -hmm. and it may mean me collaborating with the client right um it depends. So in the infrastructure of managing your business, yeah. are you finding any sort of parallels going on there with going from, I don't know, being a little more subservient in how you run your business to stepping up to being more of the expert in running your business? I mean, do you find? I definitely, um, you know, this is, this is about, it's been, it's been more about taking in more of a leadership position and, and really, there's an ownership piece in that, oh, this is my company. Mm -hmm. This isn't last time where I was just consulting transitionally. Mm -hmm. It's more of, oh, I think I'm gonna go the whole, the distance with this. And I'm not sure what that means exactly, um, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Yeah. And it's not a, um, this is just an in-between job things. I really am gonna step it up and, yeah. and try to make this work and that is requiring a little bit more of a leadership type. So of, what does that mean? Do you have any examples of where it's showing up? Um, giving clear communication and being comfortable giving direction to people who are working for me. Mm. Um, and that doesn't mean I need to be bossy, but yet it's more like this is what I need, can you do it? And if not, let's, let's look at something else. Mm -hmm. um, and, and being pretty clear on it, yeah, and not. And the other thing I've noticed is, um, you know, no, no apologies. You know, mistakes are going to be made, but where let's just move on, right? Um, and not always needing to please everyone, and um, knowing that I'm probably going to disappoint some people and be okay with that. Is that new? Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. Eee, yeah, that's a lot of growth, huh? <laughs> yep, it is. That is such a female thing. I know. God. Yeah. Even when I think it's not there, it's there. It Even is. when it's like, no, I don't have that. And then I'm like, God, I have that because I'm worried about, you know, I'm saying, oh, oh, oh. instead yes. of just being more like, this is it, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it's getting more clear about what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Like now, six months later, you know you're going the distance with this because mm -hmm. when you got into this, you thought in six months you might ultimately end up working for the client. I Yes, which I knew in about one and a half months that wasn't going to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> but that but was still, very yeah. helpful. Yes, yeah, that was a safety net for me too. Yeah. Yeah. So but the trusting yourself keeps coming up. 
Mm -hmm. Because you do know this work. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. I do. And what you decided to focus on. I think that's the really fun part. Yeah. Because then I think the work gets fun in a different way. Yes, it's engaging. Yes. I mean, that's what I said to someone the other day. I said, you know, I'm working a lot of hours. I'm working, the pace is faster than I'm used to. Um, it's not like I'm all fun and games, um, <laughs> but I'm engaged and I'm, you know, and I'm stimulated and I'm interested. And, um, yeah. you know, I can see new areas of expansion. And so that is... You know, we've talked about this on the Myers Brig, where that I'm going to see the potential. Yep. And that's, I mean, that's coming, you know, more clear to me. The N. Mm hmm. And the uh, and the P. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Love that. Mm -hmm. It's com it's, you know, it's going to be your nemesis too. Probably. Yeah. Probably. You got six yes, clients in six yeah. months. Every potential. And you're, <laughs> and you're still pumping out proposals. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Balancing for sure. Yeah. 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 That's the one other thing real quickly is when I was negotiating contracts on behalf of who I was working for, much different than negotiating contracts now on behalf of myself. Yes. In, w in what way? What's um, different? It's not as structured. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's, I don't have as many boundaries. And each and every contract, I need to decide, can I do this and will I do this, mm. um, opposed mm -hmm. to having more of a structure around what's negotiable and what's not. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've, you know, I'm learning to say no, too. Yeah. More, more often than I'm used to. No it. to clients or no to scope or no to content all. or all of it, huh? All. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was yeah. fast. Yeah. Six months in? Yeah. You must have been really ready for this. I think I was. <laughs> I think I was way over ready. It was just the little leap that needed to be, uh, yeah. You needed to quit working for somebody else. Yeah, because I couldn't get, you know, when you can't, you're so in, you can't really, mm -hmm. you can't see any other way. Mm -mm. And so I needed to get out to, to be able to see something different. Um, because the culture, you, you work within an organizational frame, a yes. culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I had presented the consulting idea to them, mm -hmm. and they didn't want to go down that path. And so I thought, okay, I will. <laughs> wait, wait, I know business, I know business <laughs> development. Jeez, I wonder if I could do this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I look at how you, um, just thinking back on how you were, our conversations were, when we went over your Myers Briggs yeah. at the Ritz. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Over lunch. Oh yeah. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. were really, you know, you were doing a lot more fretting. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know, which is pretty typical, I think, before you take the leap. Yeah. That I've noticed. Even when people have taken the leap and they're in it, there's there's still like a fret period that goes on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But um, you're so completely different. You're so <laughs> far past that. It feels like it's been. Uh, a long time ago like yeah. it literally feels like wow yeah what was i so worried about yeah um what were you worried about um you know there was a financial concern mm -hmm. i mean um and that's easily fed if you look at what's happening in the economy oh, yeah. and people going are you crazy you're lucky to have a job and benefits and, yeah. and so it was you know going against um the conditioning too yeah. of society during this time period and you know friends and family would be like are you crazy um so there was that i think the make that was the big you know the financial and then just the fear around oh my god can i really do this yeah but you know how am i ever gonna i know, know that question so how do you feel about variable cash flow yeah that's the question yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but you got over yeah. that one your scales had tipped. It was too painful to stay where you were. It you was. needed to keep moving. It was. Yeah. It was. You know when, you know, the only reason that you're like, okay, I want to get up in the morning is to walk my dog. Yeah. There's a problem. <laughs> you know, it's like, this has got to change. This is not who I, I really want to be. Yeah. People. So what's people. So what do you see looming for your business and you on the horizon? Um, well, right now, um, this is kind of, I don't know if this is looming, looming, but right now I'm trying to create the infrastructure. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, here are my projects mm -hmm. right now. Here are my potential projects. Mm -hmm. And here's where my desired growth is, which is mm -hmm. a whole totally different arena than where I am now. Mm -hmm. And then what are the resources that need to be put in place 
um, to support those because I know I can't do them all on my own, nor do I want to. Yeah. Um, so that's right in front of me right now. So do you want a bigger that. business? I think it's going to be a bigger business. I didn't know if I necessarily went in with that vision, mm -hmm. um, but I, I see the potential of how it can be. Mm. And that doesn't mean like a huge team, but I need to have my my players in place, right? Who I can call on and um, so subcontract relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was consulting a lot, I mm -hmm. had a much bigger profile because I had so many subcontracting relationships yep. compared to coaching and facilitation and yeah. training now. Yeah. It's more like a, I think they'd probably call it a lifestyle business. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is fine for me. Yeah. Gives me the variety. But I think it's all what you want, you know. What's the primary things that drive you getting up in the morning besides walking the dog? Yeah. <laughs> it's changed. Yeah. That's for sure. It definitely, well, you have, yeah. You've come such a long way. I, I So have. quickly. Yeah. Which makes me think that you were just ready. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the, what's the saying, the ripe fruit saying or something, you know? When the fruit is ripe, it'll naturally fall from the tree. Oh, yeah? I might have just made that up. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but that does make sense, right? Yeah. And this was a natural falling. Yeah. Um, even though, like you said, I fretted and I was nervous and I had fear, um, it was a natural Yeah, falling. you were on this path. Mm -hmm. This is your path, yeah. Well, we have to wrap it up, okay. summarize. All but right, yes. Look at you, yeah. though. Look at yeah. all the development and growth. Yeah, thank you, Jillian. I yeah, know. you've been a great help, for well, sure. You're welcome. I love the business development stuff, you know. It's, uh, and you're really on your way. You're moving. You know exactly what product lines you've got in place, yep. how you want to go about it. Uh, you're building, you're backfilling with infrastructure. Yeah, that's the ki that's the critical one. Because mm -hmm. I keep running into companies that don't have that, and so then I got to look at okay, that's a that's a I need to create that for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's mechanical. You'll yeah. get that done. Yeah. Well, thank you for being with thank me you, and Joanne. us. Here. Yeah, this was great. This is really fun, and it's all about you. It's all about Lori. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining us in uh, my program, It's All About You, and we'll see you next time. Good night.